Greetings, my name is Rudimentary Rob. Welcome back to my Valheim series. Today we've got a bit of a different one. Uh, we're going to return to that Flametal Spire out in the Ashlands to do some mining. Now you can see me messing around in the chest there, getting a few supplies ready. Uh, yeah, I wasn't very organised. I kind of was, but it's just stuff was spread to the four winds. So I've cut all of that out. And we are now here with the non-teleportable elements of our mining expedition. Uh, so there's a bit of uh, materials there for a shield generator. There's some iron for a uh, stone working bench. Uh, because we're not going to lug the flametal back through Ashlands. It's too heavy. Uh, what we're going to be doing is setting up a stone portal at the site. And we're going to use that to teleport our beloved flametal back to base. Uh, my original intention here was to just run over to that mining location without dealing with any of the stuff along the way. Yeah, funny thing about Ashlands and the best laid plans. Uh, yeah, the two just... it's just never going to work. Uh, so, with that in mind, uh, I'm going to get you to strap in. Uh, get your heavy-duty mining helmet on and uh, prepare for a bit of fun and uh, resource gathering. Yeah, for anyone uh, thinking that they can just skip out on killing Morgans, uh, unfortunately, uh, both of their drops, so that would be the uh, Sinew and the Hearts, are actually integral to a lot of the upgrades in Ashlands, particularly the Sinew. Uh, so unfortunately, killing Morgans is a necessary evil, so... Make sure you uh, get well practiced uh, because you will definitely make use of all of the drops. Now, something I didn't notice the last time I came through here is in amongst these ruins, there is actually a summoning stone. Uh, that may explain why I always encountered quite a bit of resistance in this area. Uh, but we are well familiar with the door knocker approach to removal of uh, annoying summoning devices. So we have taken care of that in fairly short order. Alright, and here we are, back at the Flametal Spire. 
and of course we have our more than ordinary amount of uh, locals that we have to deal with before we can get started. Now, I don't have a world of experience with mining these spies. In fact, in Ichi's game, I think we only did it once or twice. And uh, I've got to say, in both of those instances, the spy was in a much more convenient location. Now, don't get me wrong, you will always get spies in an amount of lava. I mean, that's just where they spawn. Uh, however... Uh, sometimes they are out in the middle of a lava pool and take a lot of effort to get to. Other times, like this one, they're closer to the shore and you can sort of jump across or hop, skip and jump across the lava to get onto them. Uh, this one's annoying because there's a lot of lava sort of in the ground nearby and uh, it makes doing what I'm planning on doing little bit more annoying but uh, thankfully I was able to get the shield generator close enough to the spire so that one worked out all right in the end uh, now there's a lot that we're going to be building here firstly obviously we need the workbench and we need the shield generator we are then going to be throwing down our uh, regular portal uh, because we just had too much stuff to bring with us so uh, we drop down a regular portal. Uh, this one is right next to the stone portal just in my smelting area, so it just made it a lot easier to go to and fro. Uh, so we've gone back through. We've grabbed all of the uh, bits that we need uh, to uh, finish building the setup. Uh, most of the extra was just the volume of Grawston that I needed to do the stone portal. Uh, as you can see here, build space is definitely at a premium. So now we've got our stone working bench down, we can throw down our stone portal. And then we're pretty much done. Uh, except we're not, because when you start mining a spire, it will basically summon uh, or, or attract chard from the four corners of the universe. So I'm also going to set up a few little bits of Grawston here in the form of walls and, well, mostly just walls, uh, just to try and delay them having the opportunity to destroy all my benches and portals before I have a chance to kind of defend the base, just in case the worst happens. Now, before I do all of that, I had a couple of little experiments I wanted to do. Now, before you saw me using the hoe, I was trying to see if I could raise the terrain like you do with water. Uh, well, yeah, you can't actually do that because the uh, lava areas are considered to be the ground. Uh, in which case, raising and lowering doesn't do anything. Uh, lava is still there. Uh, so here, I'm just seeing if I can build like a, a Grawston floor around it, but... It gets this weird texture on it like it's about to melt or explode or something and I didn't want to waste the Grawston so I just picked it up. Uh, so this is where I've hatched my plan. I'm just going to put some walls down to try and protect what's here. Not sure why that one kept... Uh, it wasn't in contact with the lava at all but for some reason it, uh, it wanted to keep uh, reacting like it was connected with the lava but anyway... Uh, we're doing a few more walls over here. I didn't bring a huge amount of Grawston to do this with, and I was never uh, under any delusions about being able to fully enclose my camp. It's more just a bit of, you know, protection. Uh, walls that I can duck behind to protect against archers, 
you know, all that sort of stuff. And uh, we are almost done with all of those uh, mods, and we are very close to commencing our mining run. little uh, reading with Rob moment before we get started. Uh, Munin here just letting us know that this is something that we want to be sinking our mining pick into and yep we agree. Uh, thanks for that bit of advice Munin. Uh, now I've just realized that I've missed uh, something uh, more important than everything else which is the Queen's buff. And you might be thinking oh well are you going to switch over to your mage gear, Rob? And she's like, well, no. Um, the Queen's buff actually has two elements to it. Only one of those is the Ida regen. Uh, the other element to it is just faster mining. And uh, these spires, they're like the leviathans out in the sea. You know, the big sea turtle things. Uh, once you start mining on it, there is a chance that it will start sinking. And so we want to be able to mine the absolute maximum out of this thing. And uh, to do that, we want to be able to mine as quick as we can. Now, retrospectively, I can tell you there is one other thing that I definitely forgot. See if you can work out what other thing I should have brought with me for this mining expedition. Leave your comment down below. Okay, hear that cracking kind of rumble? That's your warning that the spire is about to start sinking. And so I kind of panic a bit here and I just think, oh gee, I've got to keep mining, I've got to keep mining. Not realising that I was basically standing on fire. Yeah. So, got to be super careful about that. And the other problem there is I ran out of stamina because, of course, I was using stamina the whole time while I was mining. Not to mention all of the repetitive jumps to try and get further up the spire to do more mining. And I almost baked my noodle there, I just realised. But anyway, uh, we're just doing our little uh, corpse run here. Um, so the, the thing that I really, really, really should have brought with me for that mining attempt was some kind of stamina meat, whether it was a, a lingering one or whether it was one of the bigger ones that just give you a, a whole dump of stamina all in one go. But with a decent stamina meat with me, I would have been able to get a lot more of that mined out. So I'm going to put that on my equipment list for next time, uh, assuming I do actually come across another spire. Uh, given in all of our explorations, that is the only one I've found so far. Uh, yeah, I honestly don't know if I'll find more or not. Uh, anyway, we're, uh, 
We're tidying up the uh, mess of chard that got summoned during our mining efforts, so we're going to clear them out. Uh, we're going to collect all of our bits, and then we're going to move on to recovering the flametal that is sitting out there on the lava. So, yeah, don't worry about the flametal uh, disappearing or you losing it, um, because while you're up there mining, you obviously won't be able to pick all of it up. Uh, a lot of it will just fall on the ground like it does when you're mining copper or whatever. Uh, it it does float on the lava. Now there is actually a couple of useful ways that you can uh, pick it up. Uh, and I'm only going to demonstrate one of those at this time. The alternative option, and this is where having tamed Askvin can come into it. The Askvin are actually completely immune to the lava, so you can actually ride an Askvin over the lava and recover your flametal that way. Uh, I'm using the uh, Basalt Bomb approach uh, along with some very uncoordinated jumping uh, to get me close to where the flametal is so I can pick it up. Now these uh, Basalt Bombs, they don't last forever uh, so you do need to kind of move reasonably quickly uh, I think they last about 30 seconds. Uh, correct me in the comments if I'm, if I'm not right on that one, but I'm pretty sure it's 30 seconds that they hang around for. 30 seconds may not seem like very long, but uh, yeah, jumping around on the lava is a bit of an adrenaline rushy kind of thing, and 30 seconds feels like an eternity when you're out here. So yeah. Anyway, we've picked up all of our flametal. And now we're just working our way back to the shore. And we're now back safely on the shore. And it is time to get all of this back to base. And start working on some upgrades. Alright, the flametal gets smelted in the newer uh, places, so it's it's like black metal, essentially. It needs to be smelted in the plains uh, level uh, smelting things. Uh, blast furnace, that's what the words were that I was looking for. Um, so, we're uh, going to be working on our first upgrade, and predictably it's going to be a, a shield. Uh, a flametal tower shield specifically uh, but we also want to be able to upgrade it a bit as well and there is one more forge upgrade which I hadn't put down yet uh, which is the gem cutter mod uh, so we're just gonna get that one done now and that will let us put an extra level on the flametal tower shield and I'll show you a before and after here in a little bit uh, the amount of additional block that I'm going to get by upgrading from the maxed out black metal shield to the uh, flametal tower shield that I'm going to be uh, upgrading here in a moment it's huge it's massive and it is going to make quite a difference uh, will it make us indestructible no uh, it's like every other biome, every upgrade, every in incremental in improvement that you can make in your gear does make everything after that a little bit easier to acquire and it makes those fights that just used to be instant death become, you know, slightly more achievable to being, oh yeah, I do those every day kind of thing. So, you know, it's just like the Black Forest, when you first come across a troll, you're just there if you're lucky in your dear leather and you are running for your dear life. Ha uh ha. -huh. Uh, Ashlands is the same. When you first arrive, your your gear is good for, you know, 20, 25% of the encounters that you come across without too much effort. Uh, everything after that is either a lot of work or instant death. So that's pretty normal. Uh, but with our fully upgraded shield... We are now working on what our next uh, option is going to be. And what we're working on is a cloak. 
Now, this is a bit of a unique cloak in the sense that it doesn't just come with one armor. It actually starts with 12 armor, and we're going to be upgrading it. Not to mention, the Ashen Cape also gives you a reduction in your stamina usage for attacking and blocking. So, it is a, an amazingly good melee uh, cloak. In the end, rather than the default, you know, four-ish armor that we normally have on a cloak, this one, with the upgrades, has 16 armor. May not seem like much, but when you're making your, you know, flametal armor or whatever, to upgrade each piece, you know, one level, you're only getting two extra armor per slot. So that cloak has given me the equivalent of, what, four, uh, no, I can't do math. Give me equivalent of about eight upgrades, so it's well worth doing. And as you can see, I'm looking super stylish now with my new shield and my new cloak. Uh, that brings us to the end of this episode. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and to subscribe if you haven't already done so. In the meantime, my name is Rudimentary Rob. Thank you very much for watching and have yourself an absolutely fantastic day.